we start off the news this hour with the war against corruption, which the federal government says is very much on track. The Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, says the government has recovered more than 120 billion naira, as well as funds in other currencies. This through the implementation of the Proceeds of Crime Recovery and Management Act of the year 2022. The Minister of Environment, Mohamed Abdullahi, also blames state governors for the underutilization of the Ecological Intervention Fund made available by the federal government. The ministers made this disclosure at the ongoing President Buhari Scorecard media series in Abuja, featuring the Ministry of Environment. TVC News, Tijesu Adeoye has more. The eighth edition of the President Muhammad Buhari scorecard series features the Minister of Environment, Mohammed Abdullahi. The minister delivers a comprehensive breakdown of the ministry's performance and achievements under the leadership of President Muhammad Buhari. However, in the question and answer session, Mr. Mohammed takes a swipe at the state governors for failing to effectively utilize the Ecological Intervention Fund made available by the federal government. It said, when the state argued, initially, initially the federal government handles ecological funds, but the state argued that they must be given their own share of ecological funds. The federal government accepted, and at every fact allocation, they give their own share of allocation to states. So to come out and accuse the federal government of inaction is, is very unfair. Having gotten a fair share of your economic efforts over the years. So I, 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 I find that very, very amusing because each state is paid its share of ecological fund. But in spite of that, on the share of the federal government allocation of an ecological fund, the federal government still intervenes in states. The Minister of Information, on his part, says the federal government's fight against corruption has recorded significant progress as it has recovered over 120 billion naira through the recent Proceeds of Crime Act 2022. That the administration's fight against corruption is very much on track. As you may already know, Mr. President signed into law the Proceeds of Crime Recovery and Management Bill 2022 on the 12th of May 2022. In line with the new law, all relevant agencies of government have now opened a confiscated and for future properties account. The minister says the monies recovered will be used to fund the completion of the government's ongoing critical infrastructure projects across the country, such as the second Niger Bridge, as well as the Lagos Ibadan and Abuja Kano Expressways. Tijesu Adeoyetivis News, Abuja. Back here in Lagos State, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. AFCC has commenced the auction of a total of 435 cars, which are subjects of final for future orders. The exercise started on Tuesday this week in Lagos with an inspection of the items by members of the public, while the auction exercise began on Wednesday and continues this Thursday. According to the agency's head of media and publicity, Wilson Wujarin, the program is in line with the AFCC's Establishment Act and the Public Procurement Act of the year 2007, as well as the Proceeds of Crimes Recovery and Management Act of the year 2022. It's also being conducted in conjunction with the Bureau of Public Procurement to ensure compliance with all extant laws and with relevant security agencies on grounds to maintain order. The items are available in four locations within Ikoi area of Lagos. Nine auctioneers were allocated to the EFCC Lagos office to dispose of the vehicles at the designated center on 14 Cameron Road, Ikoi. The cars which pictures were conspicuously displayed with allocated lot numbers for public inspection were allocated to auctioneers based on assessed values and the open ballot system. This display was to provide an opportunity 
for interested bidders to view and indicate interest in any car of their choice. And the National Agency for Food and Drugs Administration and Control, NAFDAQ, has arranged two men before a federal high court in Lagos over an alleged importation of fake drugs. The defendants are a 47-year-old Bernard Chinwuba, his company, Van Chris Pharmaceutical Limited, and a 30-year-old Duru Chinwike, a fourth defendant who is a chairman of the Sabungiri Patient and Proprietary Medicine Dealers Association in Kano State, Valentine Ndukwe is now at large. They are all stand in trial before Justice Ayokunle Faji on a two counts charge bordering on an alleged importation of fake and unwholesome drugs. The defendants and the company pleaded not guilty to the charges and following their bail application filed on their behalf by the counsel Ikechuku Anima, the court granted them bail in the sum of 7 million naira each with two sureties in like sum. The judge also adjourned the case until March the 28th and the 29th, 2023 for trial. To go after the importer who, who is behind the nefarious activity. Uh, the, our, our investigation shows that the man is a serial, is a serial uh, offender. And so we went, we used all the, the, all the all the power within that we have to make sure that we pin him down because he did everything to evade uh, to evade arrest and everything so we trailed him to Kano. He does, he's not busy in Lagos. We trailed him to Kano. We were able to pick one of the directors of the company. He ran away till today. Is he at large? For on our state now where Governor Babagana Zulum has presented a budget estimate of 234 Point eight three one billion naira. This before the State House of Assembly, and this budget document is for the 2023 fiscal year. The governor also at the presentation pledged to consolidate on all that's been achieved in the year 2022 if re-elected. TVC News Jesse Tafida reports. About a year ago, the Borno State Governor presented a 2022 appropriation bill, which the State Assembly considered and in due course approved by the legislators. As the year 2022 gradually ends, the governor is back with a proposed document for the next fiscal year, the 2023 appropriation bill. All our past efforts were focused on reconstruction, rehabilitation, resettlement, security, amongst others. And the 2023 proposal shall capitalize on those gains to sustain our resilience and restore our glory. I hope you will consider and approve this proposal, which I believe is packaged for prosperity based on our developmental agenda in view of the improved security situation. The 2023 proposed bill of 234.8 billion naira has a capital expenditure of 144.1 billion naira and recurrent expenditure of 90.6 billion naira, which is 34 billion naira lower than of 2022. In the last few years, I have had the privilege and opportunity of executing three budget proposals and have compelling reasons to simply look back and be proud about the gains so far met despite the challenges. We have done it together and shall continue to do it should our people give us their mandate in the next general election? I wish to assure the Excellencies, the Honorable House will approve the processing and passage of the budget proposal we just made before the agency. It's desire to enable your administration to start the election. Allocations to the Ministries of Finance, Health and Education top the 2023 appropriation bill. The budget is talked, budget of consolidation for sustainability. As Governor Babaki Nazalim's budget of consolidation and sustainability awaits second reading on the floor of the House of Assembly, residents are hopeful that it will impact positively in their living conditions. Jessica Fida, TVC News, Maiduguri.
The House of Representatives has again passed the Nigerian Fiscal Bill for the third reading. This comes on a day the lawmakers urged the executive arm of government to fast-track geophysical survey and the seismic data acquisition. This is to ascertain the availability of hydrocarbons in commercial quantities in the Bida Basin. A National Assembly correspondent, Joke Adisa, has more. Mr. Speaker, a motion of urgent public importance from Plateau State Legislator Yusuf Gagdi opens the day's legislative business. He brings a motion on the urgent need for the implementation of acts enacted by the parliament. He accuses the Federal Ministry of Education of failing to recognize the newly created Federal Universities of Education, describing this as a misconduct. Resolve, Mr. Speaker. One mandate the Committee on Appropriation to substitute the Federal College of Education budget since they don't exist anymore for a foresaid Federal University of Education. A motion was raised calling on the government to fast-track geophysical survey and seismic data acquisition to ascertain availability of hydrocarbons in commercial quantity in the Bida Basin. The discovery of oil in another region of Nigeria is good news for the economies for the country's energy sector, and that if the volume of oil in the Bida Basin is established and the exploration activities commence fully, Nigeria may in the near future overtake Libya, the, co the country with the largest oil reserve in Africa. The bill seeking to create the Nigerian Peace Corps has again been approved by the House of Representatives. The bill now awaits concurrence of the Senate. In a swift response, the National Commandant Peace Corps of Nigeria applauds the National Assembly for the passage. Dixon Akko is hopeful the bill will become an act with President Muhammadu Buhari's assent this time. During second reading, he said those gray areas that the president raised reservation about, he only talked about security concern, and maybe one or two of the functions given then, talk about executive order to, to national assembly member, to traditional rulers, to house of assembly members, so that police can fade their core mandate of security the, uh, the society. A proposed amendment to the Pension Reform Act to exclude the National Assembly Service from the Contributory Pension Scheme also scaled third reading. Jokia TVC News, Abuja. We talk politics now and activities ahead of the forthcoming general election in Zamfara State. The All Progressives Congress Campaign Council says it is sure of a landslide victory for the All Progressives Congress in the state. Former Governor Abdul Aziz Yari stated this at the inauguration of the campaign councils in Goso. Former Governor Yari, who is the chairman of the APC's campaign council, also frowns at the recent clash between supporters of the two leading political parties in the state and warns against the use of weapons during election campaigns. Chivis News, the Ophelos Starify reports. The Independent National Electoral Commission has repeatedly promised that the 2023 general election would be free and fair due to the introduction of technology. But the major threat to this being fulfilled is the tendency by some politicians to resort to violence to have their way. Hired talks may be deployed to disrupt elections in some areas and scare people from coming out to vote on election day. This is what many Nigerians want INEC and security agencies to address before election day. In Zamfara, supporters of the People's Democratic Party and the APC have already clashed twice in three months, and this has led to the loss of lives with many injured and campaign properties destroyed. The former Zamfara state governor, who doubles as the chairman of the APC campaign council, Abdulaziz Yari, condemns the use of political thugs carrying dangerous weapons during election campaigns. He says his committee will not condone any act of thuggery and has designed strategies to tackle the problem. The former governor calls on political parties to embrace peace before, during and after elections. We are in power. Therefore, we have to tolerate more than enough, or more than what we can think of as leaders. And at the same time, I call on other parties to embrace peace. Is there, is there in the INEC guidelines? Is there in the Electoral Act? So therefore, we don't expect any party to come with the pump of violence Coming with talks of thuggery and violence is not part of what democracy is all about. The two-time former governor who is seeking election as a senator noted that landslide victory for the APC presidential candidate and other candidates in Zamfara is sure. From 2003, it's ANP. 
2011 is MPP, 2015 is APC, 2019 is APC. So I, I know God that did it to us in the past, that God is still there, so he did it for us. Earlier, the Director General of the Campaign Council and former Minister and Senator Tijani Hayakaura charged members of the council to be vigilant and committed to the discharge of their responsibilities as they were chosen based on their track records. The Zamfara State APC Campaign Council has as members two former governors, two former deputy governors, former and serving senators, former and serving ministers, as well as former and serving members of the Zamfara State House of Assembly, including Speaker Nasir Maazu Magaria. Safe Les Darufai, TVC News, Guso. The Nigeria Labour Congress, the NLC, has reiterated its decision to resist any attempt to remove subsidy on petrol without the federal government, first to making local refineries functional. The organized labor restated this position at the 2022 NLC Hamatan School in Ilori, Kwara State's capital. Senior correspondent Sharon Ijasson has more. It's the opening ceremony of the 18th edition of the Nigerian Labor Congress, NLC Amatan School, holding at the Michael Imodu National Institute for Labor Studies in Loring Kwara State. Workers here are concerned about scarcity of petrol across the country. We've witnessed a decline. Speaking on the continuous issue of removal of fuel subsidy by the federal government, NLC President Ayuba Waba said, Organized labor maintains its opposition to ending subsidy on imported petroleum products. Waba explained that it will multiply the hardship facing Nigerians. In oil and gas, we have the comparative advantage. Today is an ISO everywhere in the country that despite being a major oil producing country in the world, no country in the world import on the OPEC member country that produce oil import 100% of what they use, only Nigeria. Why? Because there are incentives that a lot of corrupt leaders benefit from when you import. They will sell a lot and continue to import. So nothing has changed. So we'll continue to be in cycle of cycle. The NLC expressed its resolve to mobilize workers ahead of the 2023 general election to vote for candidates that are ready to implement economic and social policies that will promote welfare of its members. In 2023, the Solidarity Center once again is going to partner with the NLC on a much larger scale to launch organizing campaigns throughout the country and to launch an, an advocacy campaign putting pressure on the government to hold bad actors accountable. The state governor, Abdurrahman Abdul Razak, said the current 30,000 Naira minimum wage is no longer a living wage due to the inflationary trend in the country. That 30,000, government is still taking out of it as taxes as well. So um, the challenge for government is to engage more people to work and um, the minimum wage is something that we'll continue to work on. That minimum wage will go up before the end of next year. Participants at the conference reiterated that knowledge acquisition by union leaders on ways to handle labor issues is key to industrial harmony in the country. Sharon Jasson, TVC News. In Kwara State, at least 490 small businesses have won varying amounts of non-interest loans under the Kwara State Social Investment Program to grow their enterprises. Now, 10 of the 490 young business owners got either 2 million naira or 1.5 million naira each at a symbolic ceremony where Governor Abdul Rahman Abdul Razak handed them their checks. And the 10 main winners pitched different business ideas ranging from printing, fashion, waste recycling and a Greek value chains. And the winners emerged from a rigorous process involving more than 15,700 applicants following different layers of screening by the jurors who were drawn from the private sector as well as the uh, public service. The interest-free loans were given through the Quarapreneur 3.0, uh, that's the third in the series of the Youth Focus Initiative launched to support young people to thrive. I'm proud of the uh, young people in Kwara State. Um, given the opportunity, um, they will make a great success of the state. I will 
we continue to try and provide the environment and give them the opportunities to make them excel. The 1.0 was held last year, and um, we had about 170 beneficiaries who benefited roughly about over 100 million naira. And um, 2.0 was on International Youth Day, and we had about 100 beneficiaries who parted away with 1 million naira each. That's the 100 million naira. And today, for 3.0, we are having 490 beneficiaries. This is simply because the numbers of applications that was received this time around surged over 100% compared to what we have received in the past before. And that's the reason for high number of beneficiaries for Papua New Guinea 3.0. And as the Hamilton season sets in, the in your base state, Sangaya students popularly called al Rais, are finding it hard to cope with a severe cold and shortage of food in their Islamic centers. To this end, Governor Mi Malabuni has now decided to tackle this by approving the distribution of food and non-food items to their teachers as well as the Islamic knowledge seekers. This within the Damaturu metropolis. And TVC News' Michael Oshoma reports. al are students who travel to another places in search of Islamic knowledge. But the Sangha system of education is still unable to provide basic amenities for these Islamic knowledge seekers. The Amatam period is usually the worst of times for these Almajiris who found it pretty challenging to study due to the extreme cold and lack of food in their various study centers. The Yobe state government has swung into action by providing them with food and non-food items to enable them concentrate on their Islamic studies. Our main purpose of coming here is to do, distribute food items and non-food items to this Angaya people in Damaturu, about 300 and something. But meanwhile, we are going to start with the inside Damaturu here. This type of assistance is let them to feel in fact of the government. But we always say that to make sure that this government is for low privileged people and well, even, even the politicians, the intellectuals, and the Almajres. The Asangaya teachers are also included in the distribution process in order to motivate them to carry out their duties. The gesture by the government is met with excitement by the beneficiaries. They are relieved that a major part of their challenges have been met and hope that it will be a gesture that the government considers carrying out periodically. You know we are in the winter period and His Excellency feel it is important to support the Sangaya schools uh, with uh, clothes that will help the Almajiris in covering their bodies as well as uh, blankets and food items as well so that uh, the Almajiris will also feel the impact of the government. And as you know very well, this is part of the commitment of His Excellency to ensure the uh, Sangha system of education is also being given a special consideration. The government pledges that the same gesture will be replicated in Sangha study centers across the 17 local government areas of the state. Michael Oshoma, TVC News, the Maturuyabe State.